right, in this session we're going to talk about how to create a solid model using the solids extrude function. Everything that you see on the screen right here was created using that solid extrude function and all the features inside of it. So we're going to learn how to create these pockets and how to do the fillet radius on the corner and inside the pocket and these bosses standing up and some holes drilled all the way through. We're going to draw this from scratch. There are several different techniques that you can use. What I'm going to show you, of course, is what I'm comfortable with. So let's see if this will be of help for you. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is go up to Machine Type and click Design. Then we're going to click on this first little icon that looks like a blank sheet of paper. Click on it and start a fresh file. Okay. All right, so we're going to make sure that, first of all, we have our planes set to top. So you can either click on this icon that says top or go to G view, click on top and then planes and click on top. So everything on the bottom left here is set to top. All right, then you need to see the crosshair in the middle of your screen. If you don't see it, click on F9 on your keyboard. That should toggle it on and off. All right, so we're going to create a rectangle. So from the create menu, we're going to pick rectangular shapes then for the length we're going to enter 5 inches for the width we're going to enter 4 inches then for the radius on all the corners we're going to select a half inch the shape is going to be a rectangular shape and we're going to anchor to the upper left hand corner of the rectangle and then we bring our cursor and let it snap to the origin and then you left click and there is your basic shape that is five inches long four inches wide and half inch radii on the corner and then you just click OK now I'm gonna select a little bit brighter color because the gray might not show up so first of all I'm gonna right click on this color at the bottom then it says select the entities to change the color of so I'm gonna put a window around it click this big green button and I'm gonna pick green OK then I'm going to left click again on colors and I'm going to make sure that going forward anything I draw is going to be green so that would be the system color okay alright so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extrude this shape so we go up to solids extrude and we're going to select chain we're just going to select one of those legs and if I roll that model around you can see that the whole chain is highlighted yellow okay so I pick that whole chain we click OK you can see the arrow is now down now if I click on my geometry you can see I can toggle that arrow up or down and that is the direction of the extrusion okay so in our extrude chain we have create body and we're going to extend by specified distance of two inches okay so we click OK and there is our basic shape alright so the next step we're gonna do is click on solids and we're gonna click on fillet and then make sure that only the select edge is highlighted uh, when you first select it all of these I believe are highlighted make sure that you deselect them and only have select edge on then wand over that edge and you can see it kind of highlights then you left click and then you have selected that edge and you do that all the way around okay and then we click on the big green button and it says fill it constant radius of 0.125 and click OK so if you zoom in you can see we have a radius all the way around our part right now, now you you can also see that the rectangular shape that was used to create that rectangular box is now somewhat hovering in the air because the edges have dropped away from it okay so next step we're going to draw the holes now you can click on this icon that says wireframe and basically that just turns your solids off and then we'll go back to top view and the next thing we're going to do is offset the lines of our original rectangle to the inside by 5 eighths of an inch. 
So we go to X form offset, that will be this little icon on the right, X form offset. And we're going to offset copy by 0.625. Then we're going to select the line we want to offset and then click on the left side where we want to offset to. Okay, so this line to the right, that line down, and this line up. So now you can see we have a rectangular shape that we're going to use to drill holes on these intersection points and also create some construction lines. All right, so we're going to click OK. So from the line menu, we're going to create a line from this corner to this intersection and from this intersection to that intersection. So now this intersection in the middle is smack in the middle of this part and the intersections of these lines are the intersections where the holes are going to be located. So we click OK to get out of this mode. Next we're going to click on create circle using center point. Now notice this field up here is highlighted red. That means it's locked. To unlock it you just click on diameter. Then you can change it. We're going to create a half inch diameter hole and then we're going to lock it again by just left clicking on this icon and you can see the circle is kind of following anywhere my cursor is. So I'm going to zoom in to that intersection and let it snap to that intersection and there's one hole. The next hole, next and the last one and then click OK. Alright so the next step is we're going to extrude those holes all the way through the part. So from the solids menu we pick extrude, we pick chain and we're going to carefully select those four diameters that we just created. Now notice the direction of the arrows as I select the holes. If we roll our model okay, and we click OK, notice we have one, two, three arrows pointing down and one pointing up. And that's the way you select the geometry. Sometimes it interprets it as if it's going the other direction. So all you do is zoom in, click on that geometry again, and make sure that all four arrows are pointed down because that's the direction that we want to cut the holes. Okay. So from the extrude chain menu, we're going to select cut body, and instead of a specified distance, we're going to select extend through all, and then click OK. So there's a preview in the wireframe model. And then if we click on solids, you can see we now have four holes all the way through. So next step, we're going to chamfer the holes. From the solids menu, click chamfer, one distance chamfer, and then it says select entities to chamfer. Again, make sure that you only have select edge highlighted. Then we're going to pick each hole, just like that, and click the green button that says end selection and the chamfer is going to be 60 thousandths so we click OK and if we zoom in you can see the chamfers at the top of the holes. Alright next we're going to cut the pocket in the middle so we're going to turn the solids off I'm going to click on top and I've created these two lines, these intersecting lines that create a intersection point right in the middle of the part and I'm going to use that to locate the pocket we're going to be extruding right in the middle. So create rectangular shapes. We're going to enter three inches on the length, two inches on the width and a corner radius of 0.250. Then the shape is still going to be rectangular. Now we're going to anchor to the center now notice my cursor is connected to the center of that rectangle and I'm going to let it snap to that intersection point and then left click. And there is my pocket. You can see the 3 by 2 shape and then the corner radii. So we'll click OK. We roll the model. I'm going to go to Solids, Extrude, Chain, select that whole rectangular shape. Click OK. You see that the direction of the arrow is correct. We're going to cut the body. We're going to go back to extend by specified distance 
and then enter one inch. We'll click OK. So you can see in the wireframe it shows a one inch deep pocket. We turn the silence back on and the pocket becomes visible. So next we're going to put a radius at the top of that pocket. We're going to select solids, fillet and fillet radius. Select entities to fillets. We know that we have to select the edge all the way around. So let's zoom in. Let it highlight and left click. And we do that all the way around. And then we click the big green button. It's still set from the previous radius that we created on the outside of the part to 125, so we click OK. And there's a 125 radius. Then we're going to put a fillet at the bottom of the pocket. So back to solids, fillet, and now face to face fillet. Okay? So it says select first face, set of faces for face to face fillet. So I'm going to select the bottom, I'm going to click and selection, and then it says select the second face. So I'm going to select all these walls. So rotate your part. Let's select all those walls. Make sure everything is highlighted all the way around. And then click OK. And face to face fillet, radius of 250, and we click OK. Now we look inside the pocket. You can see there's a fillet radius all the way around. All right, so that's done. All right, so next we're going to create a boss over the top of each hole. So we're going to go back to top view. We'll turn the solids off. And we're going to select create circle center point. We're going to unlock. And the first hole we're going to draw is an 875 thousandths diameter. We're going to lock it. And then we're going to let it snap to all four locations of the existing holes. Okay? So you left click every time it snaps to that intersection. And we click on the blue button to say apply. Then we unlock. And then we're going to enter 0.7. Lock it. And do that again. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we click OK. So now if we roll the model, you can see we just drew those two diameters. Now those two diameters we're going to use to create those bosses. So from the solids menu, we click extrude, we're going to pick chain, and we're going to select all of those diameters that we just created. Okay. So left click on all of those circles. All right. We say OK. Now you got to pay attention to those arrows again. You can see the only ones that are down are the ones on this first hole location. So I'm going to select both of those circles again, and then the arrows are all pointing up. And that's the direction of the boss we're going to create. So from the extrude chain, we're going to select Add Boss, and then Extend by Specified Distance is going to be. Point 0.2. Click OK. You can see a preview in the wireframe. Turn the solids on and there they are. So now we're going to draw the pockets on the side of the part. So let's zoom out a little bit and to draw on the front side of this box we're going to have to select the front construction plan. Okay so we'll click on front and now if I want to draw on this face which is four inches from the origin, I'm going to have to left click on Z, then let my cursor snap to the front face of that box, and you can see it put four inches in it. So now, when I orient it back to face, I'm going to turn the wireframe off, and the next thing we're going to do is create this pocket on the side. So we're going to put that right in the middle. So to help me find the center, I'm going to create a line, so we're going to select line endpoint and we'll let it snap to the origin here and then this corner at the bottom of the part right there and then from this corner to that corner now what it snapped to is actually the intersection of that original wireframe that we drew 
but because we are set to 2D, even though it snaps to this geometry right here, it draws the line at the plane 4 inches above Z. So let's go back to front. We have a crosshair, so we get out of this mode. All right, let's center up. Now we'll go to Create, Rectangle Shapes. The pocket's going to be 3 inches long, and it's going to be 1 inch wide. And we're going to have corner radii of 0.250. It's going to be a rectangular shape. We're going to anchor using the center point of that rectangle. And we're going to let it snap right to that intersection that we just created. All right, so there's our shape, 1 by 3 with quarter inch radii. So we click OK. All right, so we want this shape on both the front and the back side of the part. So let me rotate the view real quick. And we're going to use XForm Translate to copy this shape to the back side of the part. All right, so it says select entities to translate. Now from this little menu right here, I'm going to select chain. And when I click on that window that we just created, it highlights it. I click the big green button and we're going to copy this because I'm in a front construction plane. I'm going to copy that minus four inches. Now when I hit enter, you can see the original turns red and the copy on the other side is purple and we click OK. So we can rotate that and you can see we have that shape on both sides of the part. All right, so now one at a time, we're going to extrude that pocket a quarter inch deep. So from the solace menu, we're going to extrude, pick a chain, we're going to chain this front the rectangle, click OK. You can see the arrow is going into the part, so that's good. We're going to cut the body and we're going to extend by a specified distance of 0.250. We'll click OK. So that's one side. Now, even though this is on the back side, we can use the front construction plane to cut this pocket because it is parallel to the front construction plane. So again, from solids, extrude, chain, I'm going to pick that chain, click OK. So again, I'm going to cut the body, extend by specified distance of 0.250, click OK, turn the solids back on, and you can see we have a pocket on both the front and the rear. So all that's left is the pockets on the ends. So for that, we're going to select right plane, zoom in. We're going to turn the solids off. We're going to select lines. And again, we're going to create a crosshair. But before we do that, we're going to have to make sure that the Z is set to this right face. So we're going to left click on the Z right here. And then we're going to let our cursor snap to some geometry on that face. And there's that five inches that we need to be able to draw on that five inch plane. All right, so let's go back to right view. We're going to let the line snap to the top left hand corner and then snap to the lower right hand corner. Then the lower left hand corner and the origin right there. Click OK. Now notice that is drawn on that five inch plane on the right side of the part. Okay, so we now have a intersection that is right in the middle of the right side of the part. So back to create rectangular shapes. We're going to create a pocket that's two inches long, one inch wide. Then we're going to select this icon that says up round shape, and that means we're going to get a full radius. We're going to let it anchor to the center, and again we're going to let our cursor snap to that intersection. We're going to left click and there's the shape of our part. Then we're going to click OK. Now again we're going to have to copy that shape to the other side of the part. So again we're going to select XForm Translate. It says Translate, select Entities to Translate. From this menu we'll pick Chain. Click on our window we just created. Click the green button. We're going to copy and in Z we're going to go minus 5 inches, hit enter. Again, the red is the original, and the purple on the other side is the resulting translation of our shape. Okay, so we click OK. 
So now we're going to extrude the right side first. So we click Solids, Extrude, Chain, we're going to chain that window, click OK. The arrow is pointed in the wrong direction, so I'm going to click on that geometry again and reverse that arrow. I'm going to cut the body, extend by specified distance of 0.250, click OK. Then I'm going to rotate the part. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. Solids, Extrude, Chain, Select it, OK. The arrow is in the correct direction. Everything is set good. And we got a quarter inch pocket on that side. Turn my solids on and our part is complete. So let's go to isometric view. And now you can see we have a lot of construction lines and wireframe geometry. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move all that wireframe and geometry that we use to help locate these pockets to its own level. So we're going to right click on level. Okay, then it says select the entities to change the level of. We're going to select all, wireframe, click OK. Now notice everything is highlighted. We hit the green button. I'm going to move, select. I'm going to create level number two. And we're just going to type in wire for wireframe. Click OK. Move. OK. Now left click on level. Click on that X. Click OK. And now we have a clean solid model without the wireframe showing used to create the part. Alright, so that covers the basics of solid modeling using the solid extrude function. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.